Good morning. This is Father Stephen Kelly from St. John's Church in Detroit. We're continuing our series of daily morning meditations where we generally look at one another the lessons that are assigned for morning or evening prayer, what is known as the daily office lectionary. And as you can notice, I've dressed completely different than every other video that I've done with a morning meditation, and that is because I am ready for race day. Today is the day that I, uh, for the first time in 34 years, I am competing in a rowing race. I'm actually competing in two rowing races this morning uh, here in Philadelphia. I'm staying at my friend's house uh, here in Philadelphia. I'm dressed. We've got my uh, Detroit Rowing, uh, Detroit Waterfront Rowing Association jacket on, and I am ready to go. Uh, so I'm going to do something different today. I thought uh, one of the lessons that's assigned for morning and evening prayer is actually the Psalms. Uh, and we don't think about those, but there are Psalms there on the, the lectionary. There are smaller portions of the Psalms that are assigned uh, according to the weeks after Trinity. But the other way that we do the Psalms, is, and it's the option that we usually do at St. John's if you watch us for evening prayer during the week, is we do the 30-day cycle where the Psalms are ordered, uh, broken up in by days of the month, morning or evening prayer. And if there's 31 days like there is this month, like tomorrow is the uh, 31st, uh, you just repeat day 30 because there are other months, February, where there isn't a day 30. So um, anyway, I thought we would take a look at Psalm 144 uh, and I'm, I'm going to pick up uh, da, da, at verse number 10. Now, the first part of the psalm uh, talks about, you know, the opening line of the psalm is usually the uh, how the psalm is named. It's, Blessed be the Lord my strength, who teacheth my hands to war and my fingers to t fight. So Psalm 144 is known as the Benedictus Dominus. Uh, but uh, as he goes on and he talks about uh, having God being our defender and teaching us to battle, uh, he then goes on, he says, Thou hast given victory unto kings, and hast delivered David thy servant from the peril of the sword. Save me, and deliver me from the hand of strangers, whose mouth talketh of vanity, and their right hand is a right hand of iniquity. That our sons may grow, grow up the, as the young plants, and that our daughters may be as the polished corners of the temple. That our garners may be full and plenteous with all manner of store and that our sheep may bring forth thousands and ten thousands into our folds. That our oxen may be strong to labor, that there be no decay, no leading into captivity, and no complaining in our streets. Happy are the people who are in such a case. Yea, blessed are the people who have the Lord for their God. Now, again, let's not get into the scary thing of the prosperity gospel, where if God loves you, then you're rich. Or if you are faithful, then you're rich, right? You certainly can be poor and love God. You certainly can be rich and love God, even though Jesus actually has lots to say about the rich, that it's easier for the uh, camel to pass through the eye of the needle than a rich man to get into heaven. But then he says it's possible with God. Uh, but the psalmist here is making the point about the battles that David is having, uh, we know that David had a lot of battles with the people around him, with various nations. Uh, and then goes on to the psalmist to talk about, and we, we, we've usually given credit for the psalms to David, although more modern research has been iffy about that. Uh, but he then goes on to say, look, save us and deliver us. Let, let my children be blessed, right? Grow up like the to plants, so they grow up strong and healthy. Uh, and my daughter's like the polished corner of the temple. Beautiful, right? Uh, and then also that we may have abundance, right? So that our garners are full and we don't have to worry about that. Um, and not only he himself, but the people of Israel. He's interceding for the whole people of Israel, right? He says that uh, the happy are the people that are in such a case. Yea, blessed are the people who have the Lord for their God. You know, the Psalms are God's prayer book. And think about it, that the Psalms are the prayers of the people of God, that the Jews use these prayers as a part of the routine of their prayer life. And in fact, Jesus himself prayed these Psalms, right? So we are praying the Psalms, we pray them with Jesus and through Jesus as well. So we think about how Jesus is in the Psalms and he's precursor in the Psalms. And we take wonderful comfort in knowing that Jesus prayed these Psalms as well. And I find that helpful. And it is really the core, the base of the daily office. We do all the readings, yes, but every 30 days we complete the Psalms and we start over and over again, and someday we'll be holy like them. So tomorrow's Sunday. I'll be back in time. I'm leaving after my races tonight and coming home, uh, so I'll be there for Sunday services, 7.30 morning prayer, 8 o'clock Holy Communion, 10 o'clock Holy Communion, uh, with, or actually morning prayer with Communion, and then evening prayer with the opportunity to receive Communion. 
And I do hope I get an opportunity to see you in church to join us for worship. May you have a Saturday that is full of blessings.